Welcome to the final chapter for the Form 5 syllabus, which is called Radioactivity. This is a two-part video which will cover up this chapter. Shall we begin? Let's go! For the first part of the video, we will be covering the chapter by giving a brief description regarding the topics. Then we will be understanding the nucleus of the atom, later the radioactive decay, and finally the radioisotopes. For the brief description regarding the topics, we have constructed a concept map which will give you a better understanding for today's chapter. Moving on, let's start with the basics, understanding the nucleus of an atom. So, this is an atom. It consists of electrons and a nucleus, which also consists of protons and neutrons, which are also known as nucleons. Electrons are negatively charged particles that orbit around the electron shells while protons are positively charged particles. Next is the nuclide notation. It consists of three things. Two numbers, one on top and one at the bottom, and a letter. The letter represents the symbol of the element. The top number shows the nucleon number, and the bottom number represents the number of protons. Proton number Z is defined as the number of protons in a nucleus, while the nucleon number A is defined as the total number of protons and nucleons N in a nucleus. This is also known as the mass number. Moving on, isotopes are atoms of certain elements which have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. Another interesting fact about isotopes is that even though they have the same chemical property, they have different physical properties. Still with us? Hope you're ready, because here comes a juicy one. Radioactivity is the spontaneous process of an unstable nucleus, emitting radioactive emissions in order to become more stable, while decay is a random process that occurs when the parent nucleus produces a daughter nucleus. Next, we will discuss on the types and characteristics of radioactive emissions. The three that are known are the alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. The characteristics of all three emissions can be seen clearly in this detailed table. Since we know the types of radioactive emissions, what are the ways we can identify which is which? Well, there are several radioactive detectors that can in fact identify the types of radioactive emissions. These are the photographic films, gold leaf electroscope, cloud chambers, geiger muller tube or GM tube, and etc. The mechanisms on how these work can be explained further in the description below. Moving on to radioactive decay, which can be summarized into three parts, which are alpha, beta, and gamma. First things first, alpha. During an alpha decay, a radioactive atom, X, decays and emits an alpha particle which loses two neutrons and two protons, and becomes a new atom, Y. Next up is beta. During a beta decay, a radioactive atom X decays and emits a beta particle, where one of the neutrons disintegrates to become a proton and electron. From there, the electron is emitted out of the nucleus, whereas the proton stays in the nucleus. This could explain the proton number increasing by one while the nucleon number remains unchanged. Lastly, gamma emissions which causes no change in nucleon number or proton number. Next topic is half-life. The half-life of a quantity subject to exponential decay is the time required for the quantity, meaning mass, number of atoms, or activity, to decay to half its initial value. This is a graph which can represent a half-life of a substance. Moving on, radioisotopes are isotopes with an unstable nucleus that have a tendency to decay. The application of it varies vastly from industries, medical fields, agriculture, and archaeology. To name a few, in archaeology, radioisotopes carbon-14 is used to study and estimate the age of ancient artifacts. This method is named as radiocarbon dating, which can be used to estimate the age of organic materials. Another use for radioisotopes is in smoke detectors, with the americium-241 as its source. For now, that will conclude this part 1 of the video for Chapter 5, Radioactivity. Hope you all had a blast on this chapter, and I hope to see you all in the next video, where we will be talking about nuclear energy, management of radioactive substances, and a few past-year questions. That's it for now. See you later. Bye!